Can single moms or housewives or working moms or just women in general cut it as real estate investors? We're going to be discussing that with one of the top female investors on today's episode of the Fearless Future podcast. So I'm your host, Glenn Schwarm, here with my beautiful bride and female real estate investor. Yeah, and I'm Amber Schwarm, and Glenn has his work cut out for him today on this topic. Oh boy, here we go. Let's rock and roll. So listen, we have, if you don't know who we are, you haven't followed us for any length of time, we have flipped over 1,159 houses or something like that. We we still that do- That number changes every day. It does. We do 100 houses a year, and we have a very female-dominated- leadership team also yeah. in that company. We, we have do. a woman that runs the company. We have a woman coach for her that's run another big company. So we're surrounded by powerful, powerful women. And we have three daughters between us. So we really want to make sure we have a good example. So we have very different roles though in the world where we used to be in the active space. I should let people know that I used to do all of the buying and selling. I acted like an agent, but I never was a real estate agent. And so I did all that and all the business stuff, the paperwork behind the scenes. You handled all the contractors, the design, the, you know, cracking the whip, making sure the jobs got done and helping them get sold and everything like that. So yeah. we had very different roles than what then I would what, say is what you would think is traditional. Traditional. Yeah. And yeah. so I think that we have to dive in today and say, listen, can women really do this? Because I, I think that sometimes, you know, you've mentioned before about self-limiting beliefs. And I think you should yeah. talk about some of the things about women. And uh, I'll kind of ask some questions here today. So the first question is, can women really hack it as real estate investors? So women rock as real estate investors. I just don't think that every woman knows it yet because, you know, real estate investing is, has been a, a really male dominated industry over the, the last couple of decades and probably since it really got popular. And you and I are even part of a real estate investing mastermind that we go to a few times a year. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, for every hundred men that are in there, there's maybe four or five women. Yeah. Like it's it, a boys it, club. it is, it is very much a boys club, but I do see that dynamic shifting, especially with um, our student base. We have so many women that are just out there and doing it. But I, I think there are some self-limiting beliefs that that do kind of come into that. And and there's just an intimidation factor because it is a boys' club, or it yeah. was a boys' club. Like I said, that that dynamic is changing. And why do shifting. you think? Why do you think women struggle to get in to the space, or why why do you think it's more male dominated? Well, it's can you know if if you're flipping in particular, you know, or you're doing any sort of renovation. It, there's construction involved. So you're having to deal with, you know, those types of topics and conversations and dealing with contractors. And typically women just don't know a lot about that kind of stuff. So it can be really intimidating. Do Not to mention that you're dealing with a bunch of guys all the time. <laughs> Do you think that it used to be that flipping a house, you did the work yourself? Because I, I, I had friends and an old brother-in-law that that's what they did. In my yeah. old father-in-law, they would flip houses, but they did all the work themselves. Right. So when we first started, we thought we had to do the work. So we did yeah. the work ourselves in the first three houses. Yeah. And that was, that proved to be not the business model that we wanted. Yeah. So even I thought that, even I thought to, to be the most profitable, you had to do the work yourself. So we were like learning as we're growing. And then we finally figured out you make a lot more money in the long run if you hire it all out. Yeah. But even then you're still dealing with contractors. And I was like underestimated every pass. You know, I was, I was this little Texas girl in a New York world and, and everybody, every contractor tried to either take advantage of me or treat me like I was stupid. And, and some of that, I, you know, I'm not even going to put all of the blame on the contractors. A lot of that was just my own lack of self-confidence in getting started. And I kind of had to like fake it till I made it. Do you, do you remember the very first real estate investing seminar we went to? Oh, hell yeah. You remember what that guy said from the front of the room? So the male speaker, yep. and I think you should say it. Yeah. Uh, I was all dressed up because we were going to go on date night after that. So I, I looked a little fancy that night. Now let's, let's set the, let's set the, set the stage too. This guy is in a room, claims to be a successful flipper. This is 2007. And he claims to be a successful flipper. And he has this book put together that he's going to try and sell later on. And it was a knowledge network yep. place. And it was supposed to be, we went to this place and there was about, there were like eight people in the room, including the speaker. And we were two of them. Yeah. So, and we sat in the front row because we were eager to learn. We knew nothing. We hadn't flipped a single house. Nope. Okay. Now I set the stage. This, this guy's a local realtor, kind of a, kind of a doofy guy, <laughs> but you know, whatever, you know, whatever. So go ahead. Yeah. So he looks right at me and he says, to be successful 
and real estate. You'll have to go into houses that she'll never go into. I remember that and well. He pointed right at me. Yeah, remember what you said and to me? I looked. I looked right over to you, and I said, "He has no idea who he's underestimating." Yeah. And you know the the negative thing about that though. Well, let, is, let's frame that though. We went on to do eleven hundred deals oh, since we then. Blew and, his and, freaking doors in. Oh yeah, he went back I to being a realtor. I don't even know he's an investor anymore. He's just a nah, realtor. he's a realtor. Yeah. yeah, he's a he's a he's a he's a you know lower lower level realtor in the area. N- nice enough guy, but but just you know. It's if hard. you're watching, hi Bob. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's it's you know hi, who Bob. you are. <laughs> you know who you are, but yeah, it's hard. It's hard to be overly friendly when I know what you said of that. Fr- and yeah. I I bet that he doesn't even know that that one comment has fueled us on to become the largest investor in, the, in one of the largest in, in New York, if not the largest in New York. But but so. I but I think that also proves a point because there's people that would have heard that. There's women that would have heard that message, and they would have. You know, Hi, like Bob. taking it to heart. <laughs> Sorry, that was funny. Go ahead. They they would have taken it to heart and it would have discouraged them. You know, you you have to have some. I, I, I chose the opposite path. I chose to use that as fuel to propel me forward and, you know, basically give him a big F you. I'm going to prove you wrong kind yeah. of feeling. But, you know, it, women love to be supported and they like to be in an environment that's supportive. And, and you know, we're very tribal feeling especially when we get to a certain age. So to be, to have a comment made directly at you like that, that was, you know, not only a jerk move, but it was just degrading. It it was, it was degrading and discouraging. And like, I could have worst case believed him. Yeah. And that would have been horrible for us. Talk about one. uh, I'm thinking about one in particular, the, the contractor who was a pretty boy, he's mostly trying to hit on you Mm -hmm. right in front of me. And I remember him on Studley. It was a yes, house on yes. place. I remember, yeah. I remember it was early in our career and he was talking to you and you were managing the job. Yeah. We so, should talk about that. I also want to talk about how, how, uh, how a man can help support his woman. Cause I think we thought we figured that role out early we did. and we can help other people be good as partnerships, but let's talk about we did. that, that jackass as we got started. So I don't know why, but the number 17 is in my head. Like it was our 17th flip. Um, and so at this point I had some experience. I knew what I was doing. So. I, I remember walking in that house and we were converting this closet into a, a, a bathroom yep. uh, for that. So it, it was like a master suite. Yeah. And uh, I walked in and I saw that the sheetrock was done, but there were no outlets roughed in yet. And so I, I mentioned it to him. I'm like, you know, where's the rough in electrical for the outlets and the lights? And he goes, oh, yeah, I was going to do that after sheetrock. We, we normally do that after sheetrock. And I remember saying to him, I was not born yesterday. I don't have stupid stamped across my forehead. I haven't done 17 flips to not know what I'm doing on this one. Yeah. And you know, so basically he yeah, just he, tried he, to treat he, me like I was stupid. He was going to run the wire in the studs after yeah. sheet rock was up. That's what that basically yeah. means for roughing guys. So it, it, it was like, you know, it was like, really? No kidding. And he just, he obviously didn't know yeah. what he was doing and, and was trying to cover. And I didn't know in the beginning when we started, I knew nothing about construction, but I'm a very quick study as most people are when it yeah. comes to this kind of stuff. So you learn really, really quickly. I don't think that guy stayed in the job much longer, did oh, he? Oh no, we fired him like that week. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, cause it, he had to be fired. He was yeah. no good. Not just. He not, obviously didn't know what he was doing. Right. And you were able to, you know, catch him on that. Yeah. Let, we should talk quickly about, you know, there's a lot of people I'm sure that are, that are couples that work together. No, we've never had a fight ever. Ever. So. (laughs) Not personally or professionally. We'll be lucky if we get through this episode without having a fight. But we think we found a way early on for me to support you that I think was helpful to you. And that is that every time people would come on the job site and they would always look to me for answers. Always. And they walk in and say, hey, where where do you want to put the door over here? And what did I say? Talk to her. Talk to her. She's the boss. She's the boss. Yep. I say, talk to her. I don't, that's not my, that's not my area of expertise. I, you know, what are you doing here? And you could, you could, in many cases, you could have answered the question, Sure, but you always deflected it to me. Yeah. Remember the glass installer we had? Oh my goodness. Remember the breakdown with that guy? What what happened with that job? So yeah, we had a a major, major fight and it was almost, almost a major blow up. Yeah. We had a huge Victorian house that we were redoing in Troy, New York. And um, it had like third story windows. The glass was getting replaced. And they came out and replaced them, but they left like the glazing uh, for, for the windows all over the outside of the windows. No way for us to get up and clean them. And so I remember calling him and saying, you know, you guys left a mess. You need to, you need to finish your install and do a good job cleaning up after yourself. And he like ripped into me about we're not window cleaners and that's not my job. And you're just being a bitch and like 
calling me names and everything. And I remember just fuming yeah. that he would talk to me that way. And I told you about it. And then you started fuming. Yeah, I was debating whether to go over there. You know, I come from a, I come from a very um, loyal family. I learned from my dad, you protect your family at all costs. And I just was pissed. I was like, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to kill the guy. And I called over the shop and he, I, he answered the phone. I wanted to see if he was there. I was going to go over. And I called him. He answered the phone. I said, this is so-and-so. I said, this is Glenn Schwarm. I hadn't spoke to him yet. I said, this is Glenn Schwarm. He said, yeah. I said, call my wife a And he said, well, she was being nasty. I said, don't ever speak to my wife that way again. I was pissed. Yeah. It's just, there was no reason for it. You know, and so that, but again, I don't think that he would have ever talked to me that way. Right. And he didn't. Right. We, no, we never did business again. We went our separate ways. Yeah. But I can make it very clear that if I was the guy on the job, he wouldn't have walked up and said that to right. me. I don't know how big he was. And I didn't give a crap. I mean, you're, you don't, but that's one of the things that women deal with. They yeah. have to deal with people that are. That's one of the things that women have to overcome is, is being talked down to being discounted and people just thinking you're dumb because you're a woman, you don't know what you're talking about. And, you know, it, a lot of that just comes with time and with experience. And you just kind of have to push through those initial fears to, to get going. But as far as, you know, can women hack it in real estate investing? I think in a lot of cases, women are a more natural fit for real estate investing than even a lot of men are. And I don't necessarily even want to make this like a, a gender thing, like who's better at real estate investing, men or women? Because I think deep down, it just depends on the person. You know, it yeah, depends on your true. personality type. But I but I, I hope that women see that they are a good fit. And if they do have the right personality type, they can be just as successful as any man out there. And I, and I think that they have some skills that they bring to the table that men don't necessarily either in the beginning. So yeah. I, I think bottom line is we have to play to our strengths. You know, there's, there's strengths that men have and there's strengths that women have, you know, women can get things done by even asking a certain way sometimes. And so I, well, let, that, that's also worked to my advantage in, in cases. Let's talk about that for a minute. Cause I think that it's important when you're talking about how you talk to contractors and how they talk to you back. I'm thinking about one of our students and you were personally working with her uh, just recently. Yeah. And she had an instance with a, uh, of a contractor yes. who's a big dude. He is. He's a really big guy. He's somebody that I've worked I, with for years. Yes. And he's a little, little rough around the edges. Yeah. And tell that story about what happened and what she did. Cause as a woman, I think you have to know how to put yourself and how to, how to set a boundary yeah. with a contractor. And this is a really important lesson. I think you could, you'll, you'll tell it better than I, cause you're obviously a woman and I'm not. So yeah, I was talking to her and I was asking her how it was going, working with him. And, and she said, well, he called me honey or I forget what it was, honey or baby or something like baby. that. I think it was baby. like baby or something. And, uh, or, and uh, she, uh, she stood right up to him and she said, I am not your baby. Yeah. Don't call me that. Yeah. And so she, no, nobody puts baby in a corner. <laughs> I don't know if she went that far. I don't know. I don't know if she quoted the movie, but, uh, but, but the point was that she stood up for herself and she, you know, made sure that he wasn't looking at her that way. And, and she, she did the right thing. Yeah. She put him in her place and she said, you know, this is a professional relationship and you're yeah. not going to talk to me that way. Yeah. And, and he respected that. I, and I think when you're setting boundaries to people around you, it's important that you have a team around you that also helps set boundaries. So like, right. for instance, I was your biggest advocate with don't talk to me, talk to her. Yeah. And it got to be that uh, the team members of ours knew the same thing. Other contractors would say, I don't know. That's going to be an Amber you question. Have to ask Amber. They didn't know that question. But then, but then when you get your suppliers to defend you, yes. that's even more powerful. So yeah. I know you're thinking, what, are you thinking about yeah, the, what the I'm Home thinking? Depot, yeah. The Home Depot. Because so you should talk about that story because that's an interesting story because that's a place that, you know, we now, spend, whatever, we, we, we were spending in the millions every year at Home yeah. Depot. So we had a name for ourselves. Yeah. And what, let me let me set this the stage for this story you're going to tell because we would walk into Home Depot and Amber <laughs> was the queen. I mean, she walked in, we Home Depot in Schenectady, New York. She walked in there and she was the queen. Everybody knew who Amber was and oh Amber, can we help you today? Amber, hey, who's the doofy guy with you? So you know, and then one time Joe came out and met me in the parking lot and said, "Look, I'm coming out and talking to the Godfather. I'm in the <laughs> I'm in the car while you're in there talking and doing your thing, and you're just you were you were amazing. So anyway, so you had a you were really really well known. Yeah from the employees at Home Depot because of how much we spend. Yeah. And they knew that we had a bunch of students. And I, I was in there money. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And they, yeah, they, they knew you well. So let's tape. Uh, now that I've set the stage for you now, tell what happened that day, which was really interesting. Yeah. So I had a little okay. convertible car that you got me for an anniversary little present. Lexus, one year. Yeah. Yep. Little Lexus convertible. And uh, I parked in the pro desk parking spot. And, um, which we've earned, which a hundred percent. 
and then some, um, which I often parked there. So uh, there was a, a guy that was going and he had to park in the regular parking lot because the pro desk parking was was full. Now, let's let's set the stage for this, too. This is about nine parking spaces. Right. All trucks and Amber's little Lexus convertible. Yeah, my so little convertible. <laughs> so uh, the guy comes in, he's all huffing and puffing and he's all pissed off because there's a little convertible parked in the pro desk parking and he couldn't park there. He had to walk literally, you know, probably 30 more feet to the to the parking lot and carry his screen door, which was he know, wanted to find you and he wanted to find me. And so we actually had one of the contractors there that we worked with uh, long yep. that we've worked with for a long time that I got along with really, really well. Um, and the the guy behind the pro desk, the manager there at the pro desk, and they both had my back. And the, the guy came in, you know, rip roaring and, and saying, I'm going to find her. And he's I'm going to walk. Too. Oh, yeah. He's going to walk around the store and find me. Who Who is that that's parked there? She doesn't deserve to be parked there or whatever. And so the, the manager of the pro desk said, dude, you have no idea who that is and who you're messing with. She spends more money in this Home Depot than all of the other people parked in protest parking combined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, and then, was, that was nice to have him have your it, back. It was. And then and then our contractor actually came and found me in the store and wanted to make sure that I was going to be OK. And he actually walked me out to the car just in case the guy that was going to sure. be out there waiting for me and, yeah. and have have words. So I always wonder what that guy thought when he got back at the car. I thought, huh. <laughs> Maybe I should keep my mouth shut when I walk into a place again over my parking space because that woman can that woman's spend dwarfs my spend. So yeah. that woman is kicking my ass yeah. as a contractor. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. But I, but I think that volume. also that also goes to my strengths and the, the things that I was able to use to my advantage. I was really good at building those relationships, whether it be with the contractors or with the, the suppliers at Home Depot or wherever we were. I mean, those people had had my back and they they did nice things for me. They took care of things. So again, there's there's ad advantages that some men are going to have that that women don't and vice versa. Well, so listen, you would often take the pro desk in Home Depot. You would go and take them cookies or you sure. make them snacks. You'd make them. Now, listen, if I ever walked in and made a bunch of snacks for a bunch of guys, guys don't do that for their guys. Not not typical guys. Right. So that's not going to happen. And so bring Joe his favorite whiskey on his birthday. You and, did. Yeah. Now, guys would do that. But but you did. You went above and beyond because you could do stuff that a woman can do. You could walk in there and say, hey, guys, I made you whatever you'd make them. I remember you made them rolls or you made them cookies or you make them whatever. Christmas stuff. We'll bring them Christmas presents. Yeah. Whatever. But but, I but think you could do that and you built you strengthened that relationship because a woman can do that with a man. So you you got to use that to your strength without question. But I think that also goes to a skill that a lot of women have, and that's being able to speak other people's love language. And and I think that that's a skill that we get from, you know, that's and men do it, too. I'm not saying they don't, but I think women kind of take it, have it on the next level. And so whether whether it's with their spouse or whether it's with their kids or whether it's with anybody else, you know, we have to find what makes people tick. Yeah. And with our kids, you know, we. Kids respond to discipline differently. And so you have to find what works for each person. And some contractors, some contractors respond really well to praise and, you know, the, the, I'm going to provide pizza for your guys on Friday. And some contractors respond to, Hey, you know, I need to give you some tough love. And that was something I was much better at than you were at because the contractors, yeah. you know, if we got to, to Friday and they needed to pay their guys, but they weren't done with the phase that I needed them to be done you with to fit our tougher. timeline. You're way tougher than I was. They would actually come to you again and they would say, Amber's not paying me. Amber's being really tough on me. I need to pay my guys. And you'd be like, you got to talk to her about it. And I was super strict on that because well, I'm not going to let the money get ahead of the work. Yeah. And, and, and I, you know, but from raising kids, like I was, I, I thought of them that way. Like, <laughs> like you have to, if you want to get rewarded, you have to do the work. And so I, I, and I love paying my contractors and that's a conversation I would have with them up front. I love paying you, but you have to get the work done and I'll be happy yeah. to write you a check. I think of this like being a dad because most dads, if, dads out there, if you're hearing me right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about because sometimes the mom says no and the kids come to us. We're like, that's nah, fine with me, whatever. And you got to be very careful because you, you still, don't you dare override you, me. Yeah, you, to, you override your wife. There's a cost to pay for that too. But you know, men tend to be a little easier on that. And and again, I was contractors would get to me and I'd be like, I don't know. And you, you, you were just like, no, no. And you were very, Do the work. you were a lot tougher on them than I was. And so some, some couldn't hack it. That's the truth. You were, yeah. you were strong. So a lot of them couldn't hack it. And yeah. that's fine because honestly, the ones that did hack it would take advantage of other people like me. Right. So I wasn't very good at it. So, so but I, you're, you're, you keep talking about love language. I think love language is important because 
you're going to use those with who? I mean, you're going to use not just your contractor. You use them with almost everybody that you deal with, whether it's, um, you know, the the people that you're networking with, other real estate agents, other investors, contractors, supply, like everybody, you know, even, even when you're negotiating to buy a house, you're, you're still trying to find out what's going to make the person tick, yeah. you know, what's important to you. And women are really, really good at communicating more so than a lot of men are. So, so wait a minute. You're good at communicating because let's talk about you for a minute. Hey, I'm communicating very well right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know about I just you. Choose who being and a great what I want to communicate about. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I like how you choose. You, I'm a good communicator if I choose to be a good communicator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's more what that is all about. So <laughs> let's go down that hole for a minute. But but generally speaking, you know, and again, it, it's going to vary from person to person whether you're a male or female. But we're talking in general generalities, right? So women are typically better communicators. And so when they're, when you're trying to bond with someone to buy their house and negotiate with them, women, women, I, I actually saw something the other day that, uh, women closers close 11% more than men closers. I'm not surprised at all because of the na our nature, you know, we're better at bonding. We're better at getting people to open up to us. I can sit in and talk to anybody and get them to tell me their deepest, darkest secrets for the most part. And sometimes you're like, how'd you get them to tell you that? Like, but it's because of the. I, I remember specifically when you sat down and talked to my mom and had a conversation <laughs> about their sex life or something with my mom and dad. I'm like, I had three older brothers who were like, what are you talking about? Stay away from that topic. Don't even. What do you. Shut up. But yeah, you. Oh my God. You know, that women, was. But you. But you have no. Yeah, you have no fear going for questions like that. No, so. But. Yeah. But I. But By I, the way. Don't ever do that again. So go ahead. <laughs> I'll do it just to piss you off. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Uh, but. But I, I think the reason they're, you know, that it's still male dominated to a certain extent is just because the barrier to entry is a little different for women than it is to men. But I think that once women get in the right circle and understand that they can use their strengths and they don't have to pretend to be a man and to get the job done, they don't have to go yeah. into that yeah. masculine place. Use your femininity to your advantage. And I'm not talking about flirting to get things done. I'm just talking about. You used, to, you used to wear a bikini top when you went in. Oh, Depot, didn't you? So I... <laughs> <laughs> Never. Um, maybe some low cut shirts. That, but, yeah. you know. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> but but, you know, use your strengths and, and the things that that you have about you that are assets to your business to make it successful. You don't have to be just like a guy. Be the woman that you are and do it the way that you can do it. So you've mentioned a couple of times that women are better negotiators. And I, I am curious. I'm a pretty good negotiator. But why? Tell us why you think women are better negotiators than men. I think we take a different approach. And with that being said, negotiating is something that a lot of people don't give themselves a lot of credit for, especially women, you know, because they, they think of going into a car dealership and having to, to haggle over the price of a car yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, but I think that most women are a lot better than they think they are. They give themselves credit for. And it's because of <laughs> our negotiating skills that we have to use every day. I mean, how so? Well, if you're married, you negotiate with your spouse. Gee, what would you ever negotiate with your spouse about, honey? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what would you like to do tonight, babe? <laughs> as far as negotiating, <laughs> you mean you you tell us how it's going to be. That's pretty much how that works. But yes. So go ahead. So negotiate with your so spouse. Negotiating with your spouse. If you're a mom and you have kids, I mean, kids are the best negotiators on planet Earth. Amen. I mean, they don't take no for an answer. Amen. I mean, so we're we're always negotiating with them. Even even after we say no, that we're still negotiating with them. <laughs> Yeah. So that that like never ends. I mean, from pretty much the moment they get out of bed till the moment they go to bed at night. Can I stay up later? I need a drink. You know, like it, it doesn't stop. So but but you have to like apply that to real estate. And it is a shift. It's a little bit of a mindset shift. But like once you do it, it, it does require getting out of your comfort zone in the beginning, because I was definitely out of my comfort zone dealing with the contractors and doing construction and negotiating and you know, you, you did all the, the, most of the buying and selling, but I still had to negotiate with the contractors on what all they the were going to do the house for, you know, the price and what the extras were going to be. Like there was negotiations that happened all the time. And you, you think that everything that you did in your normal life yes. makes that make you better Yes. as a negotiator. Again, but I didn't know it at first. There's no training for negotiating. There's no training right. for that. Well, we have training, but yes. Well, there's no training how to be a mom and negotiate with kids. Oh, there's no, there's oh, no training no. for that. Right. There's no training how to do that. Right. That's what I'm saying. There's right. you, you learn that through regular life experience. But you don't and think you, about it. Then you applied it to, to real, real estate. estate. 
right. you don't think about it in your normal life as I'm negotiating all the time, but yeah. you truly are. Yeah. Whether it's with your workmates or your family. That makes sense. You know, so, so it's, it's something that you use all the time. So you mentioned. So you just got to sharpen the skill with real estate. You mentioned job site and you mentioned how you used to run job site. You said that several times, but you yeah. did. You did a great job at it, but you didn't know it out of the gates. But no. my question is, is there anything in your life that you did before <laughs> apply to that, to running a job site? It does. So. You know, typically I would handle all of our household responsibilities. And again, again, that dynamic is different with every family. But a, a lot of times women handle a lot of the household stuff and the stuff with the kids and whatnot. So in, in the house, in the saying, house. You're, I was asking about the flips. But I know, okay. but, I'm, but I'm talking about how my okay. how my experience running a normal household applies to also running a job site. Got it. Because I did all the shopping and organizing and decorating and you know, facilitating all of the kids sports and their after school activities and, you know, e pretty much everything that our, everything, that our, that everything our you do there, life what, needed. What do I do in our world? I don't even know Not what much. I do. Any oh, what do you do, honey? That's nice. You, yeah. you have a, you have that's a nice. company that comes and picks up our dog poop. Somebody mows the lawn for you. I mean, what do you do? I tolerate you and all your personalities. <laughs> okay. <so. laughs> and, and you gladly do so. Yes. I, yes. Yes, dear. So continue on. Um, but, so but, managing but a household. Just uh, those responsibilities definitely apply to managing managing a job site. And, you know, once I created some systems that worked within our jobs, like creating a scope of work to make the job work, run more smoothly, which is basically just an Excel document that shows what's going to go on in the house. Um, but once once I used my organizational skills that I already used in my everyday life, I just applied those to the to getting a flip done and a job done. It's a pretty easy transition. And, and again, it just takes kind of pushing through that initial fear and, and doing it. But what we've noticed, even with our student base, is that there's so many females that once they feel supported and educated enough, and the support's a big factor, because I think also a lot of guys are very, I'm going to do it myself. I'm, you know, I I'm, <laughs> don't want saying, to stop and ask for say, directions. Are you and, saying we don't look, read directions when we open a box? Are <laughs> no. you saying that? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, is that why everything I do has one panel backwards when I get done with it? So I'll read directions. But, but I think women, women do like support. You know, we do, we do like having that kind of tribal feel to getting things done and to feel like we're, we're doing it together and yeah. this sisterhood or, or whatever. And so I think when women are introduced to something like that, a group like that, it can be a, a very big game changer for them because they see other women doing it and other women being successful and, um, another thing that I think is really what's happening in the last few years, the last five, 10 years, um, and even during COVID, I think uh, a lot of people kind of had a necessary pause in their life to think about what's important to them and where they want to spend their time. And I, I don't think our school systems do us any favors because they create employees. But when people, when women see that they can kind of have their cake and eat it too, and that it's okay to be ambitious and go for their goals and dreams, but still spend time with their family and and be as active as they want to be in it and present as they want to be in it. I think of real estate investing, they're they're seeing what a great fit that is mm -hmm. because the the freedom that you get that you don't get when you have a normal job, you know, there's a little bit of time that goes into a flip when you're first getting it going. And then there's some time that goes into it at the end when you're kind of finishing things up. But like the the time in the middle when you're actually getting the work done, you're visiting the job site. You know, once you develop a, a rapport with the contractor, you're visiting the job site a few times a week, you know, for 30 minutes here or there just to make sure stuff's getting done. But it, it's there's a lot of time freedom that goes along with being a real estate investor. And I think that women are really valuing that and they're seeing how it's affecting their life and they're seeing other women that are doing it. And so I think it's kind of been like a light bulb moment and aha moment saying, oh yeah, I can have my cake and eat it too. I can, I can contribute to my family's household income by being a real estate investor, but I can also be really present anytime I want to be or need to be for my family. And, and I think that's just a perfect marriage for a career choice. Powerful. Powerful. One final question. Kind of a fun one. You manage, you've managed a lot of uh, of our children. You just mentioned how you manage our children. Does any of that experience translate into your world for project management? I think a hundred percent it does. And we, we kind of touched on that earlier, but when you're, when you're 
learning the love languages of your children and what makes them tick. It's the same thing when you're dealing with contractors. You're you're finding out what what makes them tick and how they're going to respond to certain things. So th- there's a common joke I have, and the joke is that running a job site is a lot like running an adult daycare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that that makes perfect so sense. Mama, so, Mama, you got this. Yeah. So bottom line is you think women are pretty darn good at I think uh, they're being amazing. Real, I think yeah. they're amazing real estate investors. I don't I don't just think they're good. I think for the for the women that really want to do it and have an interest in it and you know, and it's fun too. Yeah. Like like a lot of women just get stuck cuz we're really bad at putting ourselves first. You know, women usually put the rest of their family first whether it's their husband or their kids or their aging parents or whatever it is. We're just really bad at taking care of ourselves and filling up our own cup. And so um I I I think that when they see that they can do that and not feel guilty about it because the whole mom guilt thing is really real too. And, and I think that when they see that and, and they, they realize what it's going to do for their life, they just jump in with both feet, yeah. but there's some hesitation because of the unknown factor of it. Well, this has been great. It's been, I, I obviously know you, I live with you. So I know exactly what you were going to say on these answers, but I think that as we've watched Vester Pro grow, We've noticed that we have a fraction more women than we have men. Yeah. And I think that's because you're part of the brand and people know you and they're like, wow, a woman can do this too, because it's such a male dominated industry out there. So watching you grow and watching the women that we work with be so successful has been amazing. I think you've inspired a lot of them today. And I would say to any women that are out there, don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't do it like somebody told Amber that she couldn't do it. And I think that if you are a man, listen to this, you should get your your spouse, your your wife involved in this business because they or are your daughters or your daughters. Of yep. course. Yeah. I think of my I think of my little girl does being young and my other ones in college. But yes, get your get your the women in your life, get them involved in the business because they've got skills that are it's hard to say, but they're you just you have natural skills that are better than us men as real estate investors. And I I, I foresee a world someday where there's more women real estate investors than men. Yeah. I really do because you have the skills really crank it up so and because women do make such amazing real estate investors and our students are just turning into such rock stars and we're having so much success there a lot of our student success stories are women and and i just couldn't be more proud and i want to continue that path and continue to share this with other women so that you can really see how amazing it is so if you want to learn more about vester pro women that we're going to put a link right here in this video click on that to get more information Well, that concludes this episode of the Fearless Future podcast, Rockstar Women Division. So if you enjoyed what you heard, make sure you like the video and don't miss any future content by subscribing to the podcast and turn on those notifications.